Well, hello there, folks. Oops, sorry, wrong, wrong display. Hello, everyone. Well, hello, folks, and welcome. Just a uh, <coughs> quick short music to get us started here. How's everyone on Adult Beverage Friday? And we have a good topic tonight. It has to do with your cell phone and this new attack on it that people really don't understand, and it's called SIM jacking. And we'll talk about that and what that means in a moment after I set up. A, B, C, what does that mean? Okay, so hold on, just uh, setting up my device here so I can see all of your comments. So hello Periscope and hello YouTube. Hopefully uh, more on YouTube. Uh, the YouTube uh, live is uh, starting to to get busier and busier each time but not yet so good evening men so come on guys pile into youtube pay attention to the notifications and uh yes we are broadcasting on fridays and saturday evenings at 8 p.m pacific time hello great gold so hello twist mint amg store media Blacklight Revelations. It's Rob Rado. Okay, and uh, those are the guys that are talking on Entire Mire. Those are guys talking on YouTube. And uh, hello and lighten up, Min, uh, Brad Pitless. Who else is on uh, Periscope? So hello to all of you. Didn't get YouTube notification. Well, if I'm on Periscope, I'm on YouTube. That's uh, that's a given. So if you get a notification on Periscope, you can go to YouTube. Since uh, I always, uh, the only exception to that is when I'm not playing when I'm playing music, because music doesn't do well. Hello, Mario. Music doesn't do well on uh, on YouTube because uh, of copyright issues. So even though I'm playing the music. 
they'll say, well, that's not your composition. So it's kind of a hit or miss with that. There's some rare tunes that they actually have some uh, some copyright things on the composition. So you have to uh, you have to uh, waiting for your tweet. What the heck does that mean? Lighten up. I don't have any tweets. What does that mean? Waiting for my tweet. I can't tweet anything. Waiting for my tweet. Totally don't get that. I have never. I don't have a uh, this my my Periscope account is not a uh, Twitter account, so I'm not able to tweet. So I've never been able to tweet. I always have to rely on somebody else to tweet it, and not, then I have to, I have to uh, retweet it. Did you invite followers yet? No, I did not invite followers yet. Kanji K, hello, uh, K Kaizo, what's up, my friend? What's up? Okay, so did I? Uh, is this some new thing here? How did I protect my phone to make? Uh, you can't. Okay, so let's see. Share broadcast. Let me see how I do this. Share live. I don't even know how to do this. Uh, never mind. I, I can't figure it out. <clears throat> the problem is when I'm live, it's not the time for learning. So I don't know how to do it. So hello, Bruce Lee. So... Uh, so I'm not able to, you know, practice and see what the, you know, there's some changes to the app as well. Uh, what Libram Batch did I request? I, Brad Pitless, I requested A, B, and C. Believe it or not, I requested A, Aspen. Aspen, Birch, and Chestnut. So, but I'm so far back on the list, you know, the likelihood of getting Aspen is, uh, is kind of low. But I guess a lot of people don't like Aspen because they, uh, uh, because, you know, it's not the most finished product. But I don't really care. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. If it runs, it doesn't have to be the prettiest, I'll take it. So who cares if it's not, you know, it's handmade. Handmade's fine, it'll run. So, you know, some people are like, you know why you gotta be, a, I'll get a different case later on. I picked chestnut. Well, I, not me, Bruce Lee. I want an earlier batch, I don't care. You know, as long as they, uh, if there's anything wrong with it, it's under warranty, they'll fix it. That's fine with me. I want to get a hold of it so I can test it now. So, uh, so for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the Librem 5. And we just got an email uh, from, from Purism. We got an email from Purism for those of us who pre-ordered the Librem 5. And they gave us a choice, which I was shocked to get the choice. If we wanted to be uh, in A, B, or C, or D, or E. Uh, e, I believe, is in second quarter of 2020. So so a lot of people say, well, we don't want a beginning version of the product. We want uh, something a little bit better. So we'll choose, you know, C, D, or E. Uh, not me. I don't, you know, I'm not so uh, so sensitive that, you know, little minor thing is going to affect me if... if uh, if there's an actual defect, I'm sure they'll fix it. Not worried about that. I want to get it now. They might go bankrupt, then I don't get anything. I might as well get it now. So I'll take it. So uh, so F is in quarter four of 22. I think F is the next model. I don't think that's even the current phone. I think that's a, that's a new one. That's a new design with new PCB. So I think that's, uh, that's what that means. So, uh, so uh, it, now, if I had a Librem 5, I wouldn't have to worry about this topic that we're talking about. You'll go for Z. If I had a Librem 5, I, I wouldn't be talking about this topic that we're talking about tonight, which is uh, SIM jacking. Because uh, when I'm not using the phone, I turn the sucking phone switch off. Very simple solution. You know, I don't even get that many calls. How many calls do I get? It can go to the answering machine. I don't actually, you know, I don't, nowadays I don't even get that many calls. Hello, tweet this babe. Uh, uh, okay, tweeted you out with a title, not easy nowadays. C could you even do it? Enlighten up. So, yeah, I don't know how to do it. 
so this is not the time to learn. And I, I know you're trying to get me to uh, pay attention to Periscope, but uh, I've kind of, you know, I've kind of given up on uh, expectations about Periscope. I, I'm very, very focused on YouTube. And today I reached uh, 2,500 followers today. So that was, uh, that's uh, pretty good because I only started in mid-January. So, so I've gotten uh, to 2,500. It's growing so fast now. Uh, I'm, I'm gaining, at the moment, my pace is around 500 followers a month. So a month from now, I'll be at uh, 3,000. And then uh, a month after that, I'll be at 3,500. So we're going to end up end the year, uh, you know, on on uh, in the you know near or at 4,000 or even possibly past it. So that's what it's looking right now. So 4,000 uh, uh, subscribers on YouTube in one year would be a nice objective, and that is very very attainable. In fact, it's that's the pace right now. So uh, YouTube is doing very, very well. And thank you, people on YouTube. Thank you. And you know that on YouTube, the reason uh, it works is because of the algorithm. So many of you just discovered me because the algorithm shared me with you. My cell phone is getting hacked and computer. How are they doing this? Any idea? My cell phone is getting hacked and computer. How are they doing this? Any idea? Thanks. Okay, so, so uh, uh, I don't know if you, any of you have seen my new video. I don't know, uh, it's not even a challenge these days. What's a challenge? Thank you, Boycott Box. I, I don't know if, you, uh, if you've uh, seen my last video, and a lot of people didn't really understand. Hello, Mama Goo, didn't understand what they were looking at. So, so, uh, um, so let me explain the last video. The last video was me saying, can I program on Linux? Is this something I can do? And can I program hacking things on Linux? Hacking, specifically hacking things on Linux. So, so I, uh, I actually, uh, I actually, uh, yeah, I know uh, Tinker, so I will. I got, I got batteries. Thank you for reminding me, Tinker, because I'm too lazy. I probably, you can hear my videos too, because that thing has been like beeping nonstop. So anyway, uh, the the uh, what I did on the video is is create a uh, a Linux program uh, uh, that is intended to run on a Linux phone. So I made it so that it's sized to work on a Linux phone, just like the Librem Five. Doesn't have to be Librem Five, but it's sized for that. And I know that whatever I do will work on it, just because of the choices I made. And uh, and uh, what what uh, what is very interesting was what I was able to do in two days. And there were some you know curmudgeons on on um, Reddit. I mean, some people at Linux guys. Uh, some of you, uh, I'm sure none of you who are watching tonight, but some of these people who are in the Linux world, they're just too much. I mean, they think they're like so special because they're like, you know, they've been doing Linux for a long time. Well, Zuck, I've only been doing it for two Zucking days and I came up with that Zucking app. And there were like these people complaining, say, well, he didn't do this and he didn't do that. It's like, Zuck you, Zuck you, okay? You're challenging me to programming? I just learned it in two Zucking days. Two days, okay? Give me a month. I'll challenge any of you. Suck. Suck. Two days of learning it, and I was able to do create a hacking tool in a Linux machine. I would run on a phone, and some people were criticizing, saying, "Well, well, we, you know, they, you didn't really use the platform. You didn't, you know, it's like suck you. It's like." Gosh, these people. No wonder people want to use, go to Linux. These are the people. Uh, it's, in, it's on Reddit, Kelp. Somebody on Reddit made a comment on my video. Somebody on Reddit made a comment on my video. It's like, you know, it's like sucking idiots. Just gets on my nerves. These are the people who turn everyone off on running Linux because they're so such experts. Sucking experts. Okay? 
If I can learn this in sucking two days, don't give me a sucking lecture. Two days. Okay, I've never done desktop, Linux desktop programming before in my sucking life. And I did it in two days and I was able to accomplish what a lot of you can't even accomplish in years of trying to figure that out. Maybe kelp, probably true. Could be true. So I was able to make a really sophisticated little program on Linux for hacking. And you should see the version I have today. I'm like, it's like, it's like my own private version of Wireshark and I'm like sniffing traffic and, and I'm going to go do jam. I'm, basically, it's a hacking tool. I created a little hacking tool for Librem 5 so I can go in a network and start jamming people. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I can see what, you know, people are searching on the internet and so on. And then I can jam them, block them from, from the network. So if I see some unknown MAC address, I say, what is this? What is this, uh, 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 you know, Linux device doing over here? I don't have any Linux devices running with this ducking MAC address. Jam. I'm going to jam you. That's, uh, that's this new little program I made. And, uh, and after an extra day of work on it, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool thing I was able to build. I don't, I don't think I can build that on iOS and Android. I don't know if those are exposed. The features I'm using, I don't know if it's exposed on, uh, on, uh, on uh, Android or iOS. I mean, must be a lot of research to figure out where they hide that stuff. But I was able to do it on, uh, on uh, Linux, and it's awesome, awesome to be able to create uh, you know, some hacking tool that it, watch that video and that's just a two-day model and let me tell you if i showed it to you today you can see if you, some of you say does this guy know how to hack well that will prove it to you i should go show it to you today as what it looks like today and tell me that i don't know how to hack i create a little hacking it's actually it is a hacking tool so um, and actually it's used to discover a hacker, but you can attack back. If you spot a hacker in your network, you can actually hack back. So I actually made it so that I could sit down with my phone, my Librem 5. I, go into, uh, I, I can go into a Starbucks, wait for a hacker to attack me, and then I attack them back on a phone. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? It's pretty cool, right? So I sit at Starbucks and say, ooh, detecting a hacker here. And I said, I'm going to go attack this hacker back. That'll be pretty cool. So, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's my little project. Don't let these people get to you. You know where you are. <clears throat> yes, Ken, it's, uh, you know, I, uh, oh, obviously I know where I am. Some of these people think they're sucking experts. They don't know what I've done. Okay. So, yes, I'm new to Linux. So, don't, I mean, Linux desktop. I'm not new to Linux servers. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I've been, uh, I've been using Linux servers for a while. Uh, but, uh, of course I came from windows. How do they get on your cell? Well, tweet this babe. Don't rush. My goodness. Tweet this babe. You're too excited. You're too excited. Got to relax. <laughs> we'll get to that. <clears throat> we'll get to that. So anyway, the topic tonight is about, uh, uh, I just told you I made a hacking program I put it on my phone, but now we're going to talk about how somebody hacks your phone using this new thing called SIM jacking. I just saw that uh, Security Now, you know, Leo Laporte and Steve Gibson made an episode about SIM jacking. And, you know, it's like interesting how, you know, their explanation is a little different than mine. Uh, so. Just interesting how, you know, we can look at the same problem in a different light. I, they spent a few minutes on it. And I'm going to spend two zucking hours talking about it. And, uh, and this really illustrates to you why I believe at the end of this, it will illustrate to you why I believe the only solution, the only solution to our security is to have a hardware switch on a zucking phone. So these phones, I want to throw this zucking iPhone away. I want to throw away all of my iPhones, my Androids. I want to throw away all of those until they zucking put a hardware switch on it. Okay? 
That's what I want to do. I'm really sick and tired of these phones. So everyone's saying, oh, you got to load the new Periscope on it. It's like, really? Do I really care? I'm starting to, uh, can I buy that iPhone? Sure, you can buy it. Yes, Kelp. I paid 1300 bucks for this sucker. This has like 200, 256, uh, 256 megabytes of, of RAM. What will the switch do? Boycott box? Turn off the sucking baseband. That's what we're going to talk about. The switch will turn off the baseband. So, I'm going to tell you about your phone. I'm going to tell you about your phone. Smash the like button, boss. Thank you, Blacklight Roborado. Smash that like button on YouTube, guys. I do all these broadcasts on YouTube and people are not smashing that like button. We got to tell the algorithm that you like my broadcast. Smash it. Smash that like button, as Rob Barato says. Thank you. Smash the like button on Periscope, and if I mean on YouTube. And if you're not on YouTube, go to YouTube now and sla smash that like button. Even you, Kelp, go to YouTube, smash that like button, and you can go back to Periscope. Just smash that like button on, on, uh, on YouTube, because then you're going to learn a lot from me today. What you're going to learn a lot today is that this phone... It's not one computer. You thought you had one computer in here. You thought you had one CPU, right? Thank you, Boycott Box. You thought you had one CPU on your ducking phone. How many CPUs do you have on this? Does anyone know? I have a sort of a guess, but how many CPUs do you think are on here? I know how many CPUs are on my computer. Well, not true. I actually don't know. I actually don't know. Uh, I can make a guess, but there's actually more, more computers on this. How many, by computers, I mean CPU. How many CPUs do you think? Can, 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 can somebody uh, lay out what CPUs are on this? Uh, an iPhone has, uh, has a 813 chip. What do they call it? The, uh, no, they have a... Uh, an A8, which is a secure enclave coprocessor. So an iPhone has an extra one for security. Call it the secure enclave. So uh, it's a coprocessor. A coprocessor means another CPU. So an iPhone has your main CPU for, you know, your A13 or whatever chip they have now, A12, maybe A11 on this. And there's a coprocessor which is the one responsible for the secure enclave on an iPhone. The secure enclave is the coprocessor for the secure enclave on this phone is, uh, I believe they call it the A8 now, or it used to be A7. I, who knows? Uh, uh, yes, that guy, but watch my video. I have a video on that. So, so that's two so far. Two on this. But when I mean there's a CPU, I mean that there's an operating system running on top of the main one. So the main one's running iOS. So he said, oh, my phone runs iOS. Oh, really? Your phone runs iOS. What is running on the A8 chip, the secure enclave chip? That is its own operating system. There's some other code running on there. There's a program, it's booting up like a normal computer. It boots up, it runs the code. A lot of these little things are running Linux in there. A lot of them are. Even if you run your car, the car has, is running Linux on it. Well, this phone is even worse. That's why these phones are so expensive. Okay, so there it is. The, A, the A13, this is on an iPhone, the A13 or whatever. If somebody tells me in a comment or whatever, I'm going to dislike your video because you, it's, it's a whatever, something else. It's like, fuck you, okay? Whatever the number is. So, okay, so there's the, uh, the, the main processor. Let's say that's guessing an A13, whatever that means. And there's an A8 for the secure enclave, okay? Again, two guesses there. Uh, there's more. There's an independent processor for the GPU, meaning the graphics card. 
You know when you buy a NVIDIA card and put it on your computer or put it on your laptop? That thing is a separate computer. That's why it can process zucking Bitcoin. Did you know you can use a NVIDIA uh, card and then go uh, mine Bitcoin with it? How do you think that happens? Because the thing is a full CPU. Well, same with this. This has a CPU on the GPU. That's why it's graphics processing unit. So you have the main I, uh, com, uh, CPU for the I, iPhone. Then you have a CPU for, uh, by the way, that's multi-core. So, you know, quad core on the A13. And there must be a single core A8, whatever, for the secure enclave. Uh, who knows how many cores on the GPU? And what we did not know is that there's some other stuff in here that is running their own processor and they are uh, they are controlling other aspects of your phone as a separate computer and one of them is the zucking baseband the baseband and maybe even the wi-fi i'm not sure about the wi-fi maybe the wi-fi too but the baseband is definitely a cpu the baseband is a CPU. Okay, and what is a baseband? For some of you don't know the terminology, what the Zuck is a baseband? Boycott Box says, what is the Zuck is a baseband? The baseband is what they call the chip that handles communication with the cell phone carrier. That chip is called the baseband. Now, why did they, let's, you know, go back to their logic. Why did they use a ba a separate CPU for the baseband? Well, here's the reason why. When you release a phone, you got to get FCC certification for the uh, cell part of the phone. So you have to get that certified by the FCC, and uh, and uh, and that's time consuming. So every time you release a new phone, if you had to send the whole phone, like a new iPhone, iPhone 11 Pro, then you're gonna, you're gonna have to go to, uh, to uh, the FCC and say, we got a new iPhone 11 Pro, so uh, can you approve this, uh, Mr. Uh, FCC man? And the FCC will say, okay, we'll put it in the queue and we'll give you a response in 90 days or six months to look at your approval for your FCC approval for the baseband. Well, that's not going to work. So what they did was to, to, to cut that short. They took the baseband so that the FCC licensing is happening on a separate chip, which is the baseband, which is a separate computer. So they can actually run it separately, test with the FCC. And then when they bring it to the phone, they say, oh, we, you know, we didn't, the phone doesn't have a radio. The radio is an external component and the components already been tested. So that they do that with a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. They do that with a baseband, which is a cell signal. Okay? So basically, the, the, uh, the processor, uh, the, I mean, the, um, the chip that handles the cell is its own computer and it can be separately approved by the, by the FCC. So then all they, can, they have to do is use it every year. If there's no change, LTE doesn't change every year. So, you know, for a few years, they can say, okay, we can reuse the same chip uh, from Qualcomm and, and Qualcomm and MediaTek are the two biggest makers of these chips. In fact, they make uh, the bulk of the chips for phones and they hold, those two companies hold half the license, half the patents for, for the cell baseband in the world. That's why they control the production of these baseband chips. Now, these baseband chips, which is its own computer, I just mentioned that, uh, has firmware. So the baseband chip is actually, we don't know what the Zuck is going on with the baseband chip. So we're going to make some guesses. So what I'm going to tell you is what, what we, we know about how the baseband operates. And, uh, and then it, you have to understand this to know how the SIM jacking is part of this equation. Because there's this new attack called SIM jacking, and we're going to, 
inform you about this and if you understand this you're going to understand the sim jacking part by the way there is no sucking solution to the sim jacking other than a hardware switch or turn off your phone or put a faraday bag on it there is none at the moment one billion phones one billion phones okay just think about that one billion phones that means probably every smartphone ever made. One billion phones are subject to this problem with SIM jacking. A, a dumb phone it can, uh, yeah, maybe too old to hack, boycott box. Because uh, they only, uh, they test, some of the ones they tested did not uh, use the features. Uh, uh, probably every newer phone will be subject to this. One billion phones one billion okay now you know don't wor don't worry too much about the sim jacking uh, until you understand the consequences of it but uh, the problem is the sim jacking is just a symptom of a bigger problem and we we don't know the whole story so I'm gonna suggest a story to you I don't think sim jacking is the only problem here so the baseband is its own computer the baseband has a rewritable area where they can rewrite code so that they can do an update on the firmware on the baseband. It comes in two ways. So part of the code, I think, now some of this is based on, you know, Googling this and making some assumptions. But I'm going to make some assumptions in here. I think that part of the code of the baseband is built into a built-in flash, uh, flash memory uh, as part of the circuitry for the baseband. I think that's part of it. And I think that part of the circuitry is in the SIM card itself. So the firmware is likely rewritable and it's uh, likely in the uh, SIM card and in the baseband itself. Now, how do I know this? Because of the carrier update. Okay, think about the carrier update. So, so those of you who have an iPhone will look at your phone and you're occasionally going to see a little alert on top that says carrier update. As, I, as it turns out, not everything gets an alert called carrier update some are automatic some are included with the update of the phone and some of it's automatic so you don't actually get to get to uh, even refuse the uh, the carrier update so what is the point of a carrier update see so when you hit ok on the carrier update i believe that's writing to the flash memory on the baseband so it's able to update some code on the baseband chip which i told you comes from qualcomm and uh, and uh, mediatek so most of us in the u.s the majority of us if not all of us majority of us in the u.s uses these qualcomm chips so these qualcomm chips in the baseband and we have no idea what's in there so we're gonna have to make some assumptions that the carry update has to write to something so it has to write to flash okay it, uh I happen to have, this is not something foreign to me. I, ha I should have brought it to you here so you can look at it. I happen to have a, uh, a receiver transmitter circuit board that I use for, uh, for uh, uh, testing radio frequencies and, and learning about hacking radio frequencies. And uh, this little device uh, has a rewritable area in the, uh, in the card itself. In fact, I'm able to change the instructions on the circuitry uh, through this and it's called FGPA which means field programmable gate array field programmable gate array now that's a specific technology and it requires a specific chip to use FPGA as it's called but the the the, the principle is the same there's a the circuitry is defined in code and the code can be updated uh, in, in the terms of the baseband, 
some of or the CPU, some of it's called microcode. So there's all these different terminologies for it. The point is there's a flash memory area where you can write stuff to the chip and you can change some of the instructions and it's called microcode. Now, I'll tell you, you know, something that I've mentioned before and it's, uh, it's an interesting fact. Some of you have rec reported this to me, especially some of you that uh, are affiliated or work with three-letter agencies. So some of you who work with three-letter agencies have noticed that when you approach certain areas of town in some of these areas near three-letter agencies, such as in the Washington, D.C. area, that uh, when you drive by these places, your phone says carrier update. Now, that's kind of suspicious to me that you drive by, hello, Ann Gables, that you drive by uh, Ford Mead and you get a carrier update. Uh, you know, a little common sense tells me, what the Zuck are you trying to do here, boy? What the Zuck are you trying to do here? So you drive by Fort Meade, Maryland, and I get a carrier update. So I've had reports of people actually telling me this. And, uh, and then they said, well, I went past the uh, you know, three-letter agency there, and I hit OK on the carrier update. And I said, Zocked. You're Zocked. That means you just accepted some sort of, some sort of code Probably Stingray or something more sophisticated. Remember, Stingray is made by the Harris Corporation. What, what does the National Zucking Agency make? I'm sure they can make their own fancy version of Stingray that's fancier than the one uh, by the Harris Corporation. Okay? So, clearly, there is some capability to write code to your device. There's a way to do it. Hey, Moonchild, there's a way. So if you accept a carrier update, if you accept a carrier update and you accepted it next to a three-letter agency, you know, in terms of locale, it's a locale-specific kind of update. In fact, when I get a carrier update on my, like, uh, you know, in my, uh, at my house, I'm going to go look at the cameras and see if there's a van or some, you know, un unusual vehicle in the neighborhood that's close enough to send me a uh, carrier update because they could be stingraying me. So, so I, I always took look at that. The other thing I'm going to ask is ask people at other locations using the same carrier and seeing if they're getting a carrier update as well. In any case, the carrier update writes to the firmware, it writes something in there. Is it writing something called microcode or it's writing to FPGA, field programmable gate array? I have no idea. It doesn't really make any difference. The point is it's altering programs, firmware in the chip, which I just told you that a baseband is a separate computer. A baseband is a separate computer. Okay? Now, some of you may say, hmm, that's, uh, you know, that can't be true. That can't be. A lot, a lot of you, when I first said this, probably didn't believe me. So now let's talk about what simjacking is all about. Because this is exactly proves my point. Simjacking proves my zucking point. There is a separate CPU on the baseband that is not under the control of iOS at all or Android. It is not under the control of the phone manufacturer. The way that the, the this is the way this hacker reached this. Some of, some of it can be reached by a carrier update, which may be a permission thing. It may not be, they may have to go through Apple to do a carrier update. Uh, or go to Google for updating that portion of it. But they don't know what's being put on there because the firmware is proprietary. So they're not privy to what's inside the sucking chip. So I use both Nancy Pants. I have Androids and uh, multiple phones. I have every sucking model of iPhone and um, a few models of Androids, mostly iPhones. 
Uh, I have a Pixel, I have an Alcatel, and then I have a Blackberry. Okay, so all manufacturers, oh, I go, all manufacturers doing it. Yeah, so remember, in, in the US, most of the chips belong to one company, Qualcomm. MediaTek is probably, you know, for Huawei phones in China, but here in the US, most of these chips will be Qualcomm. Good night. Nobody important. You come in and say good night. Say hi first and then good night. Microwave. <laughs> Microwave it. Hello, Bash Equipment. Okay, so so uh, let me uh, let me uh, explain how this uh, sim jacking works because it's kind of connected. So so apparently the sim jacking works by texting now. You thought that you text and you see, you see the text on your device, right? That's the way you think this works. <laughs> no, I've always known this, that uh, to do some of the uh, hacks on, um, on, uh, on your phone, you need, uh, you need to get access to some parts of your phone. And some of them can be reached by texting. One of the things that uh, I've always known was part of the Stingray attack was that you can actually uh, uh, send a, it's called a silent SMS. You can send a silent SMS, which do not, does not show up on the phone, but it's internal to the phone. And then your phone will, will state it's IMSI. IMSI, IMSI is a cell phone identifier. So if I'm trying to track you, all I have to do is find out what your IMSI is, and there's a way to send on, on on a, on these modern phones, there's a way to send. Uh, there's a hack for this to send a silent SMS to the phone that will allow it to respond with your MZ. Well, this hijacker of uh, SIM jacker thing apparently has more information than that. Again, how does this person get the information about how to control? the baseband and you have to understand this zucking means there's a zucking back door there's a back door and they were caught sim jacking means they were zucking caught there's a back door people apparently and i'm gonna guess because the wording of the article on, on uh, the media, you know, weren't very, uh, you know, clear on, on this at all. But I'm going to guess that some three-letter agency hired a private firm to write the code, because it, apparently it's a private company, to write the code to access the SIM card and to hijack your phone by sending instructions through the SIM card. Apparently the SIM card has a website that you can access with SMS. A secret website. Remember there's a computer on the baseband. It's a computer. So you can send it a text and the text is sent to the website off the SIM card so that's probably where it's stored. They probably have, you know, HTML or whatever in there. And then they can send commands through the website. And then this will then be able to process it and then change the code and values on the baseband itself and allow you to control the phone. You can control the phone through the website of the SIM card, which is controlled by the baseband because it's a separate computer. Now, this is the uh, thing that's, uh, that I've been trying to emphasize to you that is, you know, th th that what the big issue is, okay? The baseband, I told you, is a separate computer. iOS running its own chip, it's a separate computer. The GPU is a separate computer, and so on. The secure enclave is a separate computer. The problem is all these separate computers or coprocessors, if you want to, you know, use some some uh, some uh, uh, you know 
appropriate terminology, coprocessors. The coprocessors themselves share the same RAM, they share the same memory as the main operating system. So let's say you're crafting an email, your email is being stored in memory on, on your device, on your phone. Theoretically then, somebody could write a program that's, let me re, let's scan through the memory, let's scan through the RAM, and I want to you know, scan for keywords in the RAM. Can I do that? So in theory, you can do that. That's a theory, you can do that. So this is what worries me, because it's already proved that there is one company, and I don't know what the company is, I'm not going to say it's the Harris Corporation because they already knew how to hack that. So it sounds like it could be them because they already knew how to do this before. Uh, but it could be something else. Uh, uh, just to give you an example, and this really bothers me because I don't know if you know this, but the biggest maker of SIM cards is one company. The biggest makers of SIM card is a company called Gemalto. Jamalto is the biggest maker of SIM cards, and guess what? They make a baseband too. That baseband is going to be used on the Librem 5. Jamalto that makes the SIM cards is also going to make the baseband for the Librem 5. Jamalto makes most of the SIM cards that are used on most of your phones. Here's the other thing about Jamalto. Jamalto also makes the smart chips, RFID and all that that are used in your Zucking passports. Most of the, comp the big countries, including the USA, uses uh, trackable passports with chip passports com coming from Gemalto. Gemalto spelled G-E-M-A-L-T-O, which is called a security company. But they make SIM cards. They make smart cards. They make security cards. Okay? So, so that's, uh, that's what this Jamalta thing is. So, so it wouldn't surprise me if there's a back door built into the SIM card. It, it wouldn't surprise me if there's a back door in there. Because all they had to do was pay a company like a Gemalto. How does Zuck, the, the Harris Corporation, figure out the internal code for how to hack the Qualcomm baseband for Stingray? I mean, I ask these questions. How do they get, you're, you're gonna tell, this is proprietary, inform, proprietary information. How does Zuck, do they get access to the chip which is made by Qualcomm? You're telling me, oh, we, uh, you know, the Harris Corporation just sat there and, and tried to hack it all day, and they accidentally hit on the code on how to hack a, uh, a uh, uh, Qualcomm baseband chip. You're right. Yeah, right. Okay. Folks, have some sense here. Have some sense. That is not likely. A company like a Harris Corporation isn't going to go out and sell this to to uh, to law enforcement. And say we have a product we can sell law enforcement, unless they knew what the back door was, which meant that likely they had a government contract to say find that zucking back door or deal with the Qualcomm and pay and we'll pay Qualcomm to reveal all this information. We don't zucking no people. This is the problem with proprietary proprietary firmware. We don't know what goes on in this chip. I already told you about what goes on in a Wi-Fi chip. There's some stuff going on in a Wi-Fi chip. This is crazy. And we say, well, we don't really care. We're going to just go buy the next new iPhone. And now they found a sucking way to control us and chip us all. And our reaction is, I'm going to buy the next new iPhone 11 Pro. Zuck that. Go buy new Zuck, Zucking 11 Pro? No. I'm going to buy the first Zucking version of Lib the Librem 5 and a Bind phone. I don't care if it's buggy. 
I don't care if it's buggy. I am going to use the Pine Phone or Librem 5 because I am sick and tired of this. I want to be able to switch the Qualcomm off. <clears throat> How do you stop a zucking hack that has silent SIM jacking? How does Zuck these uh, boycott box? Look, I'm using logic here. I don't have any special information. I know how the technology works. So I'm just using my logic here to say, Zuck you, you're hiding something in here. We don't know the whole story. We don't, you know, you go, watch, uh, go watch the interpretation of this problem by uh, St Steve Gibson and Leo Laporte and compare it to the way I'm looking at it. Go, go watch them. Compare what they're saying and what I'm saying to about it. It's like, oh, uh, some hacker got, got in and uh, and uh, and hacked it. Oh, right. I mean, you know, use your zucking heads, Steve Gibson and Leo Laporte. How? That's the company have access to the actual code to a proprietary software unless somebody at the manufacturer side told them how to do it. To this day, we don't know how many uh, uh, how to access the Intel management engine that is the back door to every Zucking computer. All of you have a computer with a back door. It's called Intel management engine or VPro or AMT. What's the solution to that? Well, somebody hacked the chip and found out, uh, I believe the people of Purism found that the NSA actually are setting a special flag inside the chip that allows, uh, uh, allows it to turn the Intel management engine off because they didn't want any uh, AMT running at the NSA. Smart for them, but we don't have a choice. How did they know that? How did the NSA know what flag to set on the chip to turn it off? And yes, Mac 2. Intel. Okay, how do they know how to do it and we don't? Because they have the inside information, they got the backdoor information, which they can use against us, and we have no response. Zuck. So the baseband, which is completely controlled by the government with the FCC regulations on the Zucking baseband, completely closed system. The baseband is completely closed, whatever the firmware is in that. We don't know. We don't know what's going on in there. And now, now, surprise! There's a Simjacker hack. The only surprise here is they got caught. It doesn't surprise me at all. I've known that you can do this. This is not all of a sudden, Ryan. This is not all of a sudden. It's just proving my point. I've been telling you about all these possible things you can do on a device and these events prove my my side i've been trying to tell you you can hack the phone you can do change the firmware on and so on i've been telling you that and the sim jacker attack just proves what i'm saying <laughs> can you yank the chip how does zuck do you yank the chip it's soldered on the board and that's how you get cell signal Get a Librem 5 and it's switched off. They turn off the power to the... In fact, you can unplug the chip. On a Librem 5 phone, the baseband is unpluggable. It's, you can unplug it. It's plugged in using a port called M2. So you can unplug it from the M2. And you can hold it in your hand. It's made by Gemalto. Little chip made by Gemalto, the same company that makes these zucking SIM cards, the one that was hacked. Can the phone work without the baseband? Yes, the phone will work without the baseband, but of course you can't make a call. But you cannot do it on a, uh, on a uh, normal phone because it shares the memory. But in, in a Librem 5, they actually separated the circuitry, so it's completely separate. Okay? There's no screw on a Librem 5. You just unplug it. 
Well, you may not like the Librem 5 because it's probably going to be quite thick, you know, because of the baseband being on top. Uh, it's going to be thick. It's going to be the thickest phone that I will ever have. Kind of like reminds me of uh, the 1990s with, you know, the big, big giant phones. So it's going to be a big, thick phone. Okay. So does that bother me? No, it doesn't bother me. It'll bother a lot of you though, because it will be, uh, could be twice the thickness of an iPhone. Twice the thickness of an iPhone. So if you if you want to uh, if you not limited to me uh, Ryan, limited in one says I can do, I just wrote a program for it I can do hacking with it. Zuck it's a ducking computer it's a full computer thick nowadays is still thin. Uh, how am I supposed to explain that to my children? Do you have children Tinkerballs? I don't even know if you have children. So so what what did you just learn from me today? you learn that I have not been lying to you people. I've been telling you about my, and this comes from not from personal knowledge of how these are built, but, but from knowing the technology and knowing the parts that make it up and knowing that these are separate coprocessors and so on, I understand how they have to make them. What does that can we do? Well, get a phone with a hardware switch so this coming year you're going to have some options with phones with hardware switches there will be two uh, one will be a uh, a pine phone the other one will be a Librem 5 pine phones are going to be cheap at 149 uh, I don't know what the final price will be but that's what they're offering it right now it may be more expensive than that at the end but you know it could be 200 bucks versus a Librem 5 at 700 bucks so yeah it's called a pine phone it's not it, it they're releasing only like development models right now but a pine phone is going to be a a older chip it's going to be slower and uh, and uh, it's made by pine 64 so 64 pieces of wood boards and they glue it together and they cut it up and turn it to a computer <coughs> Uh, any thoughts on how the other phones will react to the Librem's release? Wouldn't be, wouldn't be nice if people actually paid attention to my video and said, hmm, we want to show this Rob guy that we actually believe in people's privacy and the solution to that to wipe out the competition so that we can wipe out the Linux phones. There is one way for Apple and Google to wipe out the, the uh, Linux phones. Easy. Put a sucking hardware switch. My gosh, think about the sales of, you know, they would wipe out the option of a Linux phone. I'm going to go buy any phone that has a hardware switch. It could be an iPhone, an Android, whatever it is. I'm going to buy it if it has a hardware switch because I don't know how to sucking turn this thing off. Look at this hack. Look at this uh, SIM jacking hack. Well, this is so easy to fix. Turn off the switch. You can't be hacked when the switch is off. Can't be hacked when the switch is off. Turn off the switch. And I like to have some options that says, yep, I want texting or I want the text to be held. I, I want the texting to be held someplace else. I, I want it to be put on hold. I'll look at it later. I don't want to get it on my phone. I like some of these solutions that show that they really care about these kinds of attacks. But at the moment, we don't have a choice. So, so is the Librem 5 going to be it? So some of these people are like criticizing me and saying, why, are you keep, why do you keep promoting this Librem 5? It's not a perfect solution. It's bulky. It's this and that running Linux. There's not enough apps and so on. Who Zakin cares? It has a hardware switch. That's good enough for me. It has a hardware switch. I have Apple stock. I probably do have Apple stock to Greek God. I don't actually know what stock I have. I probably have Google stock too. I have no idea. <clears throat> Some of my stock is in, uh, you know, these technology mixed things. So who, who knows what's in there? <clears throat> so yeah, it could be, uh, you know, at moments it could be, uh, such, there could be Facebook in there. I, who cares? Yep, there could be Facebook in there. 
So I don't actually know, but as long as it makes money, I'm not gonna you know, concern myself with that, but I'm not gonna zucking use it. I wish these companies would go down and then my, the mix of stocks will change and maybe I won't have these stocks anymore. But at the moment, it's, it is what it is. I, you know, it, I can't, uh, I can't. Hello, Papa Bear Alaska. So, uh, so, so if you understand what I'm talking about, you can see that I have not been lying to you, that I've been telling the truth, that this SIM jacking attack is something that just proves the point that I've always told you. There's a separate CPU and there's a danger to the CPU because the CPU for the baseband shares the same memory as the operating system of the phone, meaning iOS or Android. What do you do now, Tony? Still enjoying your NordVPN? So, so, there you go, you know, with a hardware switch, how could, for example, if you switch off, so, let me, somebody asked, you know, how would you use a phone with a hardware switch? Well, I know how I would use it. If I'm expecting calls, I leave the phone, the phone on, the, the uh, baseband on. And I turn the Wi-Fi off. A lot of the spying occurs in the Wi-Fi. I, I, a lot of you will be interested to know when I demo it uh, what you can actually find out from the Wi-Fi. Actually, I'm writing this Linux program. If you want to test it, load it on a Linux computer. <coughs> Thank you, Duckins. If you want to test it, load it on a Linux computer when I get it done. And uh, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm already doing it now. I'm identifying people on my network uh, and then finding their MAC addresses on the Wi-Fi. So I can scan a network. So I can go to your house, borrow your Wi-Fi, and scan all the devices on your network. So I can visit your house, be on my phone, quietly with my Linux phone, because my program only runs on Linux. Then I'm just tapping away, and then actually I'm looking at all the MAC addresses, and I say, I'm going to disconnect you from the network right now, and just tap on that, and pop, disconnect you from the network. And you're going to say, I can't connect to the network. What? What's going on? Uh, I'm connected to the network. You're not, so I can do that, right? Well, this is where it gets exciting. Um, I can take the next step. I can take the next step, which is to actually scan any, any phone in the area and identify them even if they're not logged into the network. In fact, they could be logged on to my neighbor's network. I could jam somebody. Now, I wouldn't do this. Some of you are going to say, oh, we'll report you to the authorities because you... No, <laughs> I'm not actually going to do this. I'm going to hack myself. But it will be uh, it will be very interesting what what this shows because it proves the point of how vulnerable you are with your Wi-Fi. So if you have a Wi-Fi chip on there that you cannot turn off, I can attack it. So how does this? Uh, I'm actually uh, this was going to be the subject of my uh, of my. Uh, I'll leave this for tomorrow. This is going to be the subject of my broadcast tomorrow. I'll leave this for tomorrow. I, I want to tomorrow. I want to talk about Ring. I'll talk about Ring. Okay. You know, my 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 brother my my brother came to my house uh, yesterday. My brother came to my house yesterday, and he uh, he was showing off Ring because he has Ring. So I'll tell you what I can do with Ring. So we'll talk about that more. So don't buy Ring. I have this little fancy device here that is radar. So you see, it turns green when there's it senses motion. See? This is an alarm system I made. It's going to be on sale in October. And sequence initiated now. and this, this is why you don't buy ring so anyway we won't we, we won't talk about ring today we'll talk about it tomorrow I want to talk about ring like deeply tomorrow just to show you because it's it's uh, 
It's crazy, you know, how this is being marketed. So we'll talk about tomorrow. We'll concentrate on the base band today. So, so the base band, uh, clearly there's some insider information here with Harris Corporation and other entities. I have no idea. They didn't state who the company was that was doing the SIM jacking. Uh, but it was definitely a private firm and the, the party doing the surveillance using SIM jacking is definitely in the government. Definitely in the government. Okay, so I'm... I'm okay, now, see that? The, oop. It detected my... Me in here. That sent a notification to my phone so that I know somebody came in. Okay, so so uh, let's talk about the SIM jacking again. So the SIM jacking thing, what can they do? What can they do to you with a SIM jacking? So, so they can go to your phone and basically take over your phone. So they, they're sending commands to the phone through the text. So they'll keep texting your phone for instructions. Now what can you do with this? For one thing, it can go and read all the information. I told you about the fact that you can send a SMS or a, uh, a uh, silent SMS, silent text, and it will give you the IMZ. Well, I already knew that. That was actually, some hacker already figured that out, that you can send an SMS, silent SMS. Uh, I, I, I read it in a document that explained, you know, how you hack these phones, and I already knew about that, but uh, apparently it's much more sophisticated than that. Because you can actually, using silent SMS, you can actually text any phone. And this is one billion phones today. One billion phones, and probably most modern phones, I would guess, since they all use the same chip. Uh, and certainly probably every U.S. phone using Qualcomm. Uh, they can send a signal to the chip, and the chip will respond and send the IMZ, the IMEI, the IMZ is your SIM card identifier that identifies you with the network. Uh, IMEI is the unique identifier of the baseband chip. The IMEI is on the baseband chip, so you can't change that. Well, it's in firmware, it's in flash memory. It can be changed, but you're gonna go to jail if you change it, so can't change. So for all practical purposes, we're not allowed to touch the baseband because if we touch the baseband, we go to Zucking Jail. See the problem here? They, they have the back door to the baseband. They can control everything through the baseband. And we're not supposed to touch that, including change the IMEI, because if you go touch the IMEI, just like Kevin Mitnick, the hacker, did back in the, in the early 2000s, then he goes to Zucking Jail. He did go to jail. Okay? He didn't. They charged him with, uh, I don't know, a lifetime's worth of of uh, potential jail time he actually got out in five years but they you know they threatened him and threatened him because he uh, for every instant that he changed the IMEI they they threatened him 20 years so no I'm not gonna go change a zucking IMEI on a zucking phone I will theoretically talk about it with you because I don't know anything all I know is the theoretical side of this and I know you can do this I know because Kevin Mitnick did it you can in put instructions on your keypad and change the IMEI. I know that you can take a SIM card uh, and do a, there's a, you know, a SIM card jacker device that you can buy in China and you can reprogram the SIM card so that you can steal somebody's IMSI. I know you can do this. Okay, I even know I've seen the products they sell from China that does these uh, SIM card duplicator devices, they actually sell them and you can buy them off the internet. You can buy it off the internet, the SIM jacking, the SIM duplicator. So you can actually create a new SIM card that duplicates any IMZ of anyone in the world uh, and you can just randomly guess an IMZ and then use it and if it happens to be a valid account, it'll work. Okay, so now, so what I'm, what I'm, uh, what I'm, what I'm uh, so, so f from, from uh, what you're understanding here is that, yes, there is a way to program things through the SIM card. Now, but there's more. 
apparently there, there's more instructions here. For one, someone, uh, I, and I thought there was a hack you could do this in using SS7. There's some way you could hack a phone using SS7. <clears throat> now, I don't know if the SS7 channel, that's a separate channel on the cell signal to give instructions to your phone, if that instruction is related to this hack on the SIM card. Because there's also a way to do the exact same things I'm talking about using SS7. SS7 is a uh, secondary band. So when, you're, when you're talking to the cell carrier, you're actually sending two signals. A, one for the, uh, the voice. So the voice data goes in there. And there's uh, metadata that goes this way. So every time you transmit on your phone, two pieces of data go. The, uh, the voice data and the metadata portion is called SS7. So apparently inside the phone network, you can hack SS7. This was on 60 Minutes. Okay. Now, uh, since SS7 can do some of the things that this SIM jacking ha hack is doing, I wonder if there's some connection there in some way. I don't know. Of course, but uh, obviously you can issue the same commands through SS7 to the phone. So what are the commands you can issue? You can make the phone call out. So you can go take over. I could, t t if I had this hack, which, you know, you'd probably have be a government. Uh, you would probably, let's say I wanted to go to uh, Bray Mister's, uh, Bray Mister's, uh, phone I know his phone number I send a secret uh, message from his phone to send to somebody else so I could say so a hacker would take over somebody's phone and have it send messages to somebody as if you're trying to send the text yourself so somebody can fake text messages as if they were coming from your phone and it's silent so you're never going to know this so you're, there's not going to be any acknowledgement. You're not going to know that this is that you're being hacked. Bramer. Okay, Bramer, not Bray Mister. Okay. So 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 somebody could hack Bramer's phone and send messages to Russia. <laughs> Think about the implication of this. Think about the implication of this. So then we'll say Bramer. Collusion with Russia. We have evidence. We have evidence. We showed his phone talking to Russian hackers. Think about that. Think about that. What if they did that to a politician? Remember, remember who controls, remember who controls these sim jacking hack the sim jacking hack is a government hack it's a government hack that means it's a deep state controlled hack and they said uh okay senator you're gonna do what we tell you to do senator because if you don't you're gonna find yourself associated with some russian uh, people and it's going to be in the press and you're going to be accused of collusion so you better support us Mr. Senator or you're going to be blackmailed so are you going to support what we want we want more Patriot Act stuff we want to have spying on all US citizens at our leisure and you're not going to go stop it because if you stop it some, some messages are going to come out of your phone going to the Russians and you're not going to be able to stop it Crazy stuff. That's the kind of stuff you can do. Okay. What other stuff can you do? Uh, you can open websites with this. So I told you, you share memory between the uh, baseband and the operating system of the phone, iOS or Android. So apparently this little baseband can send a command to the phone to open up a website. 
Okay, so what's the significance of that? Well, I can open up a website with malware. I can open up a website with malware and then you will have the uh, website already on there and loaded and so you will actually be, uh, be exposed to the malware and the malware could be a keylogger. Uh, Bramer, the one that scans 3D environment, that's going to come on the Pixel 4. Okay, what else can they do with this SIM jacking thing? Fortunately, it's still limited. I mean, it's not, they can't do everything. But this is the way to attack it. If they can get you to, to uh, load some malware on there through a website, then that's the way they're going to attack it. Now, it's not that simple because you've got to have root rights to be able to do something of any seriousness. But this is something you can do. You can turn on the phone. Now, what happens when you turn on the phone and you dial a third-party number? You can turn on the phone and have it dial you, the hacker. Then you can listen in. So, you have no idea. The phone is in your pocket. You're having a secret meeting. Then I turn on your phone to call me. I can now listen to you through the phone microphone because you're on a phone call. But you don't know that. Now, fortunately, fortunately or not, this hack is more of a government hack. This is kind of like a stingray. But just bothers me, the kind of stuff we're exposed to, and we don't have any zucking input, and we're supposed to go take it, slap in the face again. More, take it. Give me the other cheek, yeah. And all these people are so into their zucking cell phones, are saying, this is so zucking cool. It helps them with law enforcement. Oh yeah, so Kelp, uh, okay, Senator Kelp, you're gonna vote our way and there's no democracy here, Mr. Senator Kelp. No democracy. We want you to vote this way or we will blackmail you. But Kelp says, no, this is really good for surveillance. They have to have that. <clears throat> Don't you think they already have so much information they can use for blackmailing like... Uh, Internet activities and so on for these politicians. Do, do you not think the three letter agencies have that? You fucking kidding me? Oh, Kelp, like, you know, Kelp doesn't really understand democracy. He doesn't, uh, only, uh, Kelp must be, uh, Kelp must be a, um, a fucking communist. Kelp might be the Zuckin comments. He likes, you know, he likes a uh, dictatorship government because he doesn't believe in democracy. So it's very, very, uh, very, very interesting. I don't believe in democracy. So the uh, government has to have full control and be able to surveil anything they want. And there are no rules and they, they can't be stopped by anything. They can do anything they want. And there's no way even a senator or congressman can stop them. And that's the way I want it because it stops terrorists. And it's like Kelp is like, uh, uh, when, when Kelp says that, he's saying, Terrorists, you have won. You have terrorized this nation into to, uh, to being uh, zucking sheep. And you have won, terrorists. Now, I'm not like kelp. I do not want them to win. I do not want them to win. And they do not win when I get my privacy. They do not win. Yes, let's make a law that says everyone gets, uh, you know, uh, rights for freedom except for kelp. Kelp does not have freedom rights. He doesn't deserve it. Does not deserve it. So anyway, so this is the kind of stuff that I, this is already what I'm saying to you. What I'm saying to you about the, the way that you can be hacked with a sim jacking is the stuff that the press reported. This is what they said you can do with this. But the problem is this information is not complete and not correct. Because what is the difference between the SIM jacking, which is controlled by a government that can hack your SIM card with all these, 
How is this different from the Stingray attack, which is also a government attack on your phones? How is this different? So basically, they just, we're just adding to their toolkit. So their toolkit says, we can trace you on your phone. We can fly a plane overhead from a far distance up in the sky and using, uh, using uh, our special techniques, you will announce yourself to the airplane in the sky. And we can find you anywhere as long as you have a Zuckin baseband chip that's communicating because they will communicate to our cell tower in the sky and says, I'm here, I'm MZ12345 and uh, I, I'm the one you're looking for. No, Wolfie, they are not prevailing. That's why we need a chip, a hardware switch to turn it off. A, a kelp is like, uh, uh, kelp is totally lost. Kelp, kelp is totally lost. Kelp is totally lost. He, he just doesn't understand that uh, the Chinese government loves these kinds of tools. And it's like, well, this is America. That's not going to happen here. Oh, really? America is where we use Stingray. Stingray was developed in America because of people like Kelp that says we need this because we need to track every zucking citizen. Every zucking citizen. I do not, I love the police, Kelp, but I don't want to give them tools like this that are not based on legality, not based on my rights with the Fourth Amendment. Did you know that uh, until recently that the police were able to spy on your phones using Stingray or the SIM jacking attack without the Fourth Amendment uh, being an issue because they didn't have to get a warrant. They didn't have to get a warrant. But Kelp said, oh yeah, we need to give them all the tools. Oh yes, let's give them all the tools without zucking checks and balances even the constitution said right to search and seizure and Kelp said we will suspend that and that's what they did with these devices until recently until last year until last year in fact uh uh yeah last year they uh, they uh, uh allowed somebody to stingray you now with michael cohen when they stingrayed michael cohen uh you know, for, for uh, you know, when they wanted to, to uh, spy on Michael Cohen with Stingray, I actually read the warrant. They actually had to use a warrant by then. They actually had to use a warrant by then. But before that, they didn't have to use a warrant. Uh, one thing, another thing that changed, uh, uh, you know, this, this year, uh, in California, the court ruled, the court in California ruled that you cannot use biometrics to open up a phone automatically. Before then, the police were doing that. They were saying, okay, you have no right to, uh, to warrant, uh, you know, no such thing. If you have a phone and it's biometrically uh, operated, well, just put, post it on your face and we can go look at your phone. So the uh, court ruled that that required a warrant. Well, they can't point the phone at you to open up the phone. And they can't ask for your password without you giving it to them. So, but last year, they could. Uh, it's a federal court, Kelp. It's not sucking California. It's a federal court. So this is why they now require warrants to do that in the entire United States. <laughs> you were arrested for taping them? <laughs> For taping the uh, the camera on your phone, the only way to say no is to get a statement. You retain your rights to decline. <laughs> wow, <clears throat> wow! I'm just telling you. You know, it, we're just slowly building all this in, and the sim jacking is specific to the government. This is the sim jacking attack is not an attack by a regular hacker, they got the code for doing this 
uh, through a private contractor that must have had inside backdoor information on how to do this. Uh, where did helping the police become a bad thing? Uh, Kelp, the, every policeman, a good policeman, knows that you do things using the proper rules of law, including getting a warrant and all of that. That is the pro a good policeman knows that. Why are you even arguing, Kelp? That's why we have a constitution. And you're saying, let's cancel the constitution. There's nothing to do with helping the police. I'm a supportive of police probably more than you are. But I am not going to say, let's cancel the Zucking Fourth Amendment. Fourth Amendment is Zucking Search and Seizure. You have a right to unreasonable search and seizure. That's why the rules that you can't just open your trunk without a warrant. And so on. Okay, so there, you know, that's, that, that's what those rules are for. So, you know, is to preserve your rights. And I just told you how easy it is for someone to get to your phone, use this government-controlled SIM jacking, government-controlled SIM jacking, and have your phone communicate with secret messages to bad guys and say, see, we have proof. We looked at your phone and we have proof you're talking to bad guys. See here, there's a message on your phone. It's like, suck. <clears throat> this is the kind of craziness that is possible. And, and like, why do we enable such technology? Why? This is technology that, uh, this is technology that, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the purpose is. So we really have made ducking spy bricks. A term I stole from the Linux gamer on YouTube. Spy bricks. I like it. Spy brick. It has to be invented before you can ban it. Zuck kelp. You're zucked up. Zuck, this kelp is so zucked up. They've been using this for a decade. It's like, oh, you have to invent it. Well, they've been using it for a decade. But you, you, a decade is, a, oh, uh, you know, we, it's easy. We can use it for 30 zucking years as long as we don't tell you about it, then you're not going to know. So, the, so these people have been using this and you do not know. How about, you know, secret cameras being put in there uh, uh, on uh, the, uh, electric post next to your house or how about them putting little you know little uh listening devices and all this and we're like saying oh you know we don't really care so uh, j just to give you an example about this okay so some of you just have no idea what the technology is so so i've mentioned this before but just just uh just so you uh you uh understand this uh i can point a laser at your window and listen to your conversation. I can point a laser at your window and listen to your conversation. This is old CIA tech. This is this is this is old stuff. Okay? And some of you will say, well I can catch that because I'll see the red dots. If I see any suspicious red dots in my window, I know somebody's listening in. Okay? What if they used infrared lasers? So you go to the uh, Amazon, you can now buy an infrared laser. How the Zuck do you see an infrared laser? So now they can put the infrared laser against uh, Kelp's window and no warrant. And Kelp will say, well, you know, they can catch a terrorist, and that's good. They can listen to me all day. Muggsy says, I accept that between Google and Amazon, I have no secrets. You forget Apple and Microsoft in there. 
You you forget about every ad company that's doing f uh, browser fingerprinting. Uh, you forget about all the thousands of apps that are sharing your location information. Uh, you're crazy, Muggsy. You have no idea what you're saying, which, by the way, are being shared with the government. So you're really saying is that all the information they're capturing, Muggsy, that they're all shared with everyone, and you're okay with that. Because if you think it's just being shared with Apple, Google, and Amazon, you'll hear about it tomorrow when I talk about Ring. Apparently we are, Bramer. We are the bad guys. We are the bad guys. So if you accept that, you know, we're supposed to, you know, be spied on and it's acceptable, uh, I don't find that acceptable at all. Uh, you know, I, and I tell the story and, and Kelp will always laugh at me at the story and say, well, that doesn't apply here. Well, I'll tell you the story anyway, so, so you understand. When I was young, I lived in a country that was... Uh, uh, that that was a dictatorship and i was talking about it with my brother yesterday hey my brother is uh you know was also living in, in that uh, dictatorship when when we were young and he was big to use uh today he's big to use facebook and zuckbook and all these different uh, platforms and he doesn't think about it and and i had to uh i had to kind of uh make him think and say what if what if the dictator had all the information on you that these companies have on us now what would have happened and he and i looked at each other and said we'd be in zucking jail you could be uh you could be on the did, did you know that they the uh that uh you know there, there are some countries now, they're all copying the UK. They're putting cameras in every corner. Cameras in every street corner. So they're putting cameras in every street corner. So, so if a dictator controlled those cameras and you said something against the government and it's on the camera, you're back in 1984. You're going to go to jail. And we're saying, well... We have freedom of speech. A dictator doesn't care about freedom of speech. The Chinese government doesn't care about freedom of speech. And these private parties in the US may allow you to do freedom of speech, but they're going to try and manipulate you. 1984, they put them in reform camp, yes. Big Brother has to retrain you. Retraining, retraining with Big Brother. That's in the book 1984. That's if you, you know, if you have a, so you know, it's what's the name of that? Uh, uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. You know, they uh, they don't like the way you think. They go, uh, you know, lobotomize you with one uh, uh, one flew off the cuckoo's nest. That movie. That's what they're gonna do. They don't like what you say. They're going to lobotomize you. You think you had freedom. Some of you think, oh, uh, look, look at kelp. Some of you think that you're, you're actually free today. So some, some of you actually uh, uh, saying this. Oh, uh, you know, China has these social scores. And boy, I hope we don't have social scores in the sucking U.S. I hope we don't have social scores. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Did you go to mylife.com? Anybody been to mylife.com and search yourself and find out what your sucking social score is? How about Intel, you spoke, you axiom? I think my social score was like 2.4. It's like, suck you. Totally, totally, uh, you know, wrong information. It's like, oh, social score 2.4. Uh, Zuck. Because it's wrong information. They don't care about that. That's your social score.
So there's, uh, there's, uh, you know, it's saying you're, you're saying, you're, uh, you're saying, uh, you know, you're saying this is all acceptable that we all have a social score, and we're saying, oh, this is only going to happen in China. No, the U.S. is the most tracked with intelligence axiom. We have third parties, private companies doing the tracking, and we're allowing it. And the more we put these devices on here. Uh, I thought you were going to say credit rating. No, credit rating is not related. So, yeah, at, at the moment, they're not doing anything with your social score, but somebody hiring you would. If somebody were going to hire you, they're going to look at your Zucking social score. Okay, so you so you thinking that what I'm talking about these phones that they're all unrelated. They're very very related because these phones are collecting information uh, that you have no control over. By the way, a credit rating uh, expires after three years. Credit rating expires after three years, uh, uh, unless it's a bankruptcy that expires after seven or whatever, seven years, and. Uh, and they're supposed to wipe out any trace of uh, it on your records after 10 years, stuff like that. Uh, social scores, they don't have any such limitation. They could keep that information on the internet forever, forever. Doesn't affect your credit rating anymore, but somebody will say, well, I don't know if I wanna hire you. Because, you know, there, you have a social score in here. Uh, you don't, you shouldn't, what is it, Rob? You should attend sci-fi convention. Uh, <laughs> no need. <laughs> iOS 13 update, turn on your location. <laughs> there are so many ways to get location now that, you know, So anyway, you're you're uh, Bra Bramer. You should be watching me on YouTube. You're you have a lot of comments. You should be watching me on YouTube, so so you can put all the comments on YouTube instead of here on Periscope. Guys, watch me on on YouTube, please. So anyway, uh, uh, Rob, right there. If you're wondering who I am on YouTube, Rob Braxman Tech. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Rob Braxman Tech. So appreciate it because uh, I'm not trying to, you know, my my. Although I have thirty thousand followers on on Periscope, uh, most of those thirty thousand have left Periscope. So I'm trying to, you know, so that they don't watch me anymore because they're not on Periscope. So I want, maybe I'll catch them on YouTube. Uh, re redirect you where, Tony? How come you don't watch me on YouTube, Tony? I want 1,000 to live, to live. <clears throat> um, so anyway, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, you know, nobody talks about what I talk about. It's I, I, uh, I I'm kind of proving the point to you. Thank you. I'm trying to. Do you hit like? I'm trying to prove the point to you that when I. Uh, talk about some of the things like a baseband and why it's important to turn off the baseband and although I talked talked about this a few a few weeks ago you you actually uh, you actually uh, needed proof that I'm not lying that you can actually control the baseband and do all this and now the news suddenly support what I say suddenly the news says yep he's right we're talking about this for a while in fact I talked about it before the sim card jacking uh, and uh, all you have to do, Bra Bramer, is go to your Google um, activity controls and turn off the YouTube history. Then they don't they don't track your your uh, interests on YouTube. Well, they'll know your interest from the subscription, I guess. But can't be helped. I need your support. <laughs> so. And I'm not an evil guy, so it doesn't have any negative impact. Uh, D 
These days, many f stores you enter are using facial recognition to track everyone that comes in and connect to the free Wi-Fi to give him more info. Muggsy, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Come back tomorrow because I will tell you about more. More about that. Okay? Muggsy, I'm building an actual program to prove this to you. Because many of you uh, don't, you know, I tell you this and you don't believe me, so I got to run a real, real program. Well, actually, demonstrate a program. I'll run it, show it to you on the broadcast, and show you what I can see, and then you'd be shocked. Thank you, Escrow Fox. I'll show you, you'd be shocked. Oh, well, Bray, Mr. Bramer, I just told you, they can turn on your phone with this SIM jacking attack and listen in. So if you're not looking, your phone may be on. If you're not looking, your phone may be on. Now, and I told you about the new Pixel 4 from Google. So the Pixel 4, uh, I'm close to the end total, I'm at the end at 10 p.m. Uh, if you have a uh, Pixel 4, the new Pixel 4 that will be released has radar. They call it Soli Radar. So are actually proud of it. We have Soli Radar. This is a special kind of radar, uh, kind of like this radar that I have on here. Okay, watch that the green light is radar. So every time I move, it detects my movement. So there, the radar is off. Okay, and you can see as I move, the radar goes on. Okay, now what's interesting about this device is they have a version of this that is not just a radar for gross movements like this is. The Soli radar is actually a topo topographical radar. It can act, this is how, what they say. The, the, uh, the uh, Soli radar can count pieces of paper that's how accurate it is it can count pieces of paper meaning the radar is actually able to get a topography of where it is and can probably look at shapes and movement and that's going to be built into the phone so if you're walking around naked then it can see your entire profile say there you are walking naked and can see your entire shape as determined by the radar probably in 3d if you're doing anything in bed, it will know it because the radar can sense all of that and then transmit it someone to someone like a Google. And given that the baseband can be hacked, it, theoretically, then somebody can take this information and pass it on the internet and send it to a three-letter agency. Okay, that it can count, and they're gonna use this for facial recognition. So this radar is is uh, it's gonna be amazing because you're gonna put a little sensor on your phone that can actually sense topography. Whoa, that is fucking crazy. Now the iPhone already has infrared. Okay, iPhone is already infrared. So now they're gonna put radar in here, which has even greater range. This. And we say, let's take it. Kelp says this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Let's take it. We'll accept this. This is good stuff. So I want to dump these phones. I am. I get anger with these phones every single day. That new phone with the radar is going to be a Google Pixel 4. <laughs> Google Pixel 4 will have that new Soli radar. This one has IR. Yes, but Kelp doesn't believe that there's such a thing as government monsters and dictator monsters and government monsters. He doesn't, he doesn't understand that. Because they said you need facial recognition. I mean, you know, the fingerprint wasn't good enough, so we need facial recognition. The fingerprint was fine. I, I don't see any problem with the fingerprint at all. Why do they have to change the technology? What is the advantage of 
facial recognition over the fingerprint. The fingerprint was very fast. Governments are more stable. Exactly. So if you're a dictator, you will be stable. Because you will never be re elected out of office. If you're a senator, you can be in there forever. They don't need a blood sample. You, you, Because this is your chip. This is your chip. They don't even need to embed the chip because you don't want to leave this home. So I will leave at home once I get my Librem 5. I have no reason to use this because I can have access to the internet. I don't care if I don't have any sucking apps. If I have access to the internet, I can go to the websites. I can go Google something and do all that on the Librem 5. It doesn't have to be an app. It, I'm not going to go to use Facebook on this. If I can go to YouTube, um, the website, I'm fine which will work on a Linux machine, so that's no problem. India scan all citizens for healthcare card. Well, that's not a problem, Bramer. They've already scanned us all here. Microchip. So so anyway, I'm, this is why people have, have said, you know, you, you shouldn't be promoting this Librem 5 because it's an ugly phone. It's thick. Can't run Facebook. It can't run Snapchat and all that. Can't run Instagram. We don't want that. And my reaction's great. I love that. Can't run all those? Good. Because they can't spy on me. I love that. Uh, purism. The Librem 5 is made by Purism. The uh, Pine phone is made by Pine64. Uh, the the uh, Purism Librem 5 is going to start shipping uh, next week. Uh, and then, uh, so the first batch of that will come out next week. And then, uh, and then uh, so, you know, may, may get into people's hands, in uh, some people's hands in October. So... You know, they may only be, uh, you know, I, I presume they only uh, sold a few thousand of those. So they're only making a production run of 10,000. So I'm a citizen just like, no, Kelp believes he's a super citizen. Kelp believes he's a super citizen and you, uh, and he has a right to demand the cancellation or suspension of the uh, Constitution. Kelp thinks that, uh, you know, he's a special citizen. He can demand that the Constitution be suspended. By the way, uh, Snowden, Snowden uh, was sued by the Department of Justice. Snowden was sued by the Department of Justice. because they, they, So if you buy the Snowden book, if you buy the Snowden book, the profits will go to the U.S. government. That's the plan. They don't want Snowden to make a dime. So Snowden probably doesn't care. I'll say, well, I probably won't make a dime. Uh, he can always, you know, republish the book in uh, Russia. <laughs> Maybe we buy it from a <clears throat> Russian uh, Russian publisher, uh, and then he can make money there. But they blocked him from making money from the book. Yeah, you can buy the book. So, so, uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how that works out. They came in, uh, 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 app should be the next bane of folks' existence. Our phone calls between two Librams secure? Uh, I don't consider any phone call secure, but they do have voice over IP with encryption, yes. And you could probably run it with a Linux device. I got, you know, they're saying they're using voice over IP over something called Matrix. Uh, I'm not familiar with this, but, uh, you know, uh, when I get the phone, I'll test it out. 
And if it runs on a Librem phone, then theoretically you can have a conversation between two Linux machines because a Linux phone is just Linux. So you could have a conversation using encrypted voice over IP theoretically onto Linux machine. So we'll see. So, you know, so we'll, we shall see how that works out. So anyway, uh, uh, Steel Snowden's book, donate your copy to the library. Yeah, maybe that's the way to do it. Donate a copy to the library and we'll read it there. <laughs> Except I likely get it as a, you know, Kindle, Kindle uh, book. But the, here's the thing. If you get the Snowden book, then... Uh, do they have a record of you and say, "Oh, you, uh, you, you read the Snowden book, so we we have you tagged." The, the uh, three-letter agencies have you tagged. So I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Thinking about how to do this. So uh, anyway, let me again show you this product that I will be uh, releasing in October, which is coming up. So something for the Christmas holidays, and this is one of my products. Aside from the Brax Wi-Fi router, VPN router, the Brax Wi-Fi VPN router, which uh, I forgot to bring a case over here, which uh, I've been uh, I've been selling for a while, and this is one of the first ones to be available. This is a radar-based alarm, kind of like the Pixel Four, but used for your purposes. So the way this works, the way this works is there's no subscription, there's no nothing. Doesn't cost you anything to use it. Uh, the VPN router is 149. It's on my store rob.brax.me. Go to rob.brax.me and you're gonna get the VPN router. And get a VPN as well. Bytesvpn.com. So so uh, and that's how you support the program. Anyway, this device is great for security. So if you want to say, is anybody is anyone walking to my room? Let's say you want to protect a bedroom. You want to protect a, a whole uh, part of a house? Well, this one will work. This can actually protect a very large area because all you have to do is press the button. Alarm sequence initiated now. And that turns on the, uh, the uh, and you can watch the lights change. <clears throat> and that device will, uh, will turn on. It'll turn red when it's on. And uh, gives you like 40 seconds to, to uh, give you 40 seconds to get out of the house. <clears throat> and uh, Stoda's book is going to be a honeypot? I don't know. Now, what's nice about this, it gives you a... Uh, notification on on an app so you can tell if somebody's uh, you know intruding on your private area so again it's all motion based see how that works pretty cool motion based it can automatically reset or I can set it manually again it can auto uh, reset. So if you can say, I'll, I want it reset every, uh, there is no camera. Bramer, there is no camera. That's why it's safe. There's no listening device, no nothing. It's just a, uh, it's just a uh, radar, okay? This is gonna be on sale for 129. Uh, this is a introductory price. There's a full computer in there, so, you know, there's a lot of handmade electronics inside. I think I showed you the electronics before. With it, uh, you know, it kind of functions like an echo. It has voice. Alarm is active now. Okay, so again, watch this. So as long as I don't move, nothing happens. It, it does, this works in the dark. It doesn't care if it's light or dark. But if you move... I have a separate camera device that's outdoors, not indoors. I don't believe in indoor cameras. Outdoors. I have an outdoor camera, uh, and uh, 
we fool can complain about the fact that the case was too large so we're redoing the case okay we're redoing the case of the camera the 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 camera is pretty awesome because it does high resolution video like that high resolution video it's uh it's very very cool and uh with uh night night vision and all that wide angle lens and uh, and uh oops and and uh that uh uh is uh also stored all the storage is put on the device itself so you can access it from any computer in the house you can have multiple computers set or you can just put your computer on a on a quick tab favorites and then you can actually look at your camera at any moment and see what all the motion detected is okay so with a combination of this a uh, motion detect here this will protect your physical security it can also tell you for some of you this can be useful too to see if somebody is touching your computer going into your bedroom stuff like that so this device uh, can spot uh, any uh, you know can spot motion so this is uh, this is going to be available uh, starting in October for 129 and we already have stock of this we're we're uh, we're gonna have a stock I'm just trying to uh, finish the manual and you know it should be ready to go okay so so a lot of you already pre-ordered this and uh, and so this will be ready the camera will be ready too. camera will be probably a, a short delay because we're redoing the case even though that's running perfectly so um, uh, cannot have pets yeah you can because uh, uh, like if if the bottom is metal it doesn't track the low level it only tracks upper level so like the piano is metal so if you go underneath the piano nothing you know no matter how I move I'm gonna move my hand underneath the piano it's not gonna do anything here you see it in a moment because it can't actually the metals right here this is metal Alarm is active now. okay it cannot track motion where there's metal but here there's no metal Alarm. Alarm. so you can basically redirect to where your pets won't reach okay so if you set it high enough and put foil underneath or something uh, put foil on the bottom of it just put foil on the bottom that'll keep it from sensing the bottom if we have audio resistant material it's it only reacts to metal it it's only stopped by metal and I believe glass it's not uh, you cannot stop it with wood or anything like that we're wanting to be invisible so this is not this device is uh, is an alarm that doesn't send your photos to Zucking Amazon okay it doesn't send your your uh, it doesn't send your data to Amazon but it's it's such a cool device and there's a full computer inside and uh, and you can you see the speaker in it kind of like an Amazon Echo I should have made it round like an Echo huh I just didn't know how to mount the I was thinking about how to mount the you know in a future version maybe we'll redesign it to look like an echo would be funny if we actually made it look like an echo um, but it's it's very sophisticated because the radar and all the circuitry in there so so this is going to be available for the Christmas holidays and for the for so so put this on your Christmas list uh, put this on your Christmas list we only have so many of these made we only have so many of these made so put this on the Christmas list we'll be starting shipping this in October so start planning that out o October from devices dork so thank you for uh, for watching my friends and uh, wow it's 10 9 59 exactly uh, <laughs> I like time this exactly here so so what uh,
consider this device for the holidays and to support the program. Get my VPN router, Bramer, rob.brax.me, rob.brax.me, and uh, you can order the VPN router, which works as a Tor router if you don't have a VPN subscription. If you have a VPN subscription for me, then you can make it a VPN router. Uh, but if you want to use it for free, you just turn on the VPN router or use it as a regular router. Uh, follow you, well, of course, you mean on Periscope. Sure will. Uh, let me see. What's the button to follow now? Yes, Bramer. Done. Yep. Now, I shouldn't really care. You, you, on you, you boob? I can't do that here. Can't do that here. But uh, yeah, I shouldn't really care about uh, about uh, about Periscope anymore. My numbers on Periscope, they, they every time I broadcast, my numbers goes up. Then every day I don't broadcast, my numbers go down. So it's like this is crazy. My numbers haven't changed in months. It's like I'm kind of losing patience with Periscope. So. So, uh, sorry guys, I mean, I know some of you are, you know, loyal Periscope uh, watchers like Kelp, but, uh, but uh, I don't know, it's just not working. Why, why they want 1,000 to live live, I have no idea. Periscope is for the special people, <laughs> special K. Thank you, my friends, thank you for watching, and tomorrow I want to talk about uh, my hacking capability. We're going to talk about hacking and how that applies to certain products like Ring. We're going to talk about hacking. I'm, I've been working very hard on uh, on building, uh, you know, my my hacking application for the uh, for the Linux computers, which I expect will run on the Librem Five. Uh, I'm planning on making a run on the Librem Five. Uh, it probably will run as is. But I don't have one to check, so so we'll find out. But uh, but uh, more than that, I'm building all the features in there, and the final step of sizing it for the phone will be later. But it's gonna be fun what this thing can do. I built something much simpler, but you might like. Well, uh, watch that video I have on YouTube on uh, the uh, Linux uh, Linux app, and you will uh, see if I have any programming chops anybody uh if anybody doubts uh, that I, I that i know what i'm talking about you can see what i did in two days two days you can see what i finished in two sucking days and you tell me if i know what i'm talking about two days and some guy from reddit is like oh he's like you know complain 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 like suck you can you do it in two days? From nothing? I knew nothing? I knew zero about Linux desktops? Wrote a very sophisticated thing in two days? You zucking do it. Instead of going out there and like talking like you're zucking genius. Yeah, some of these people, it's just, uh, you know, like the curmudgeons, they, they, they can't, they have... Nothing positive in life is just, you know, they got to put other people down. So, so I don't really care. I mean, you know, if you tell me I don't know much about Linux, I don't. That shows you what I did in two days of understanding it. Two days of understanding something from scratch, knowing nothing. Before I started, I didn't even know what the terms were. So we'll see. We'll see. If you question my zucking skills, anyone question my zucking skills, you, you're going to get proof. Well, you already saw the proof. Okay? Two days of proof. We'll see what I can do given a little bit of extra time. So if you don't know what I've been able to do in my life, then you're... Uh, uh, I've done a lot in my life. You know, uh, uh, for those of you who, uh, who heard this... Uh, who heard this? I will repeat it for you again. Bill Gates was demonstrating my software. Bill Gates was demonstrating my software. 
at a uh, keynote. Kind of like, you know, what Steve Jobs goes in terms of an Apple event. Well, Bill Gates was doing it in a Microsoft event and he was using my software. Okay? So if you think that I'm some zucking idiot, I'm going to say, zuck you. I've never programmed. <laughs> and I do have an app. It's called Brax.me and we all talk on Brax.me. Go visit that. Uh, go visit that. Um, uh, hello, Simon. And uh, go visit my... Uh, 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 no, Simon, it's no more freaky than Stingray. It's just as freaky as Stingray. What was that software? Brax.me. Come join us and talk to us at Brax.me. It's a privacy-based social media. Uh, and you'll say, well, there's not a million people here. That's right. There are not a million people in Brax.me. I can't uh, compete with the big guys, but it's a pretty good app. So come over to Brax.me. It runs on Android, iOS, and any computer with a browser, including Linux. Okay, your first project was making a timer clock. Should I do, do I need to do like, uh, uh, somebody was asking me to do like tutorials on how to write programs for Linux and I, do I really need to do this? Do I really need to teach you Python and stuff like that? I mean, you know, there's other people who do that. You know, I, uh, uh, my expertise would be wasted. I, I, I gotta teach you what I can do about hacking so you understand uh, what can be done to you. If you know what I can do, then you, you ought to worry. You ought to worry. I'm just giving you, like, uh, you know, I, I'm not hiding the secrets of what I'm, I'm able to do. So if I can show you by real things that I do, that what I can do, and it gives you fear, then that is good, and I'm uh, 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 accomplishing, accomplishing my objectives. And my objective isn't to hack you. My objective is to let you know that you can be hacked. Because I don't hack. I do not hack. It's not my business to hack. I only prevent hacks. Yes, I do, Bramer. Thank you for uh, <laughs> thank you for coming by. Thank you. Good night, everyone. And I'll see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. Pacific time. Good night.